This short clip comes from the book Nuclear Extinction Event 2, Killing Our Family, found on Amazon Books by Marco Vovk. This is a small section from this new popular book. The global graveyard of atomic waste, the Earth's newest extinction event is at warp speed. The Kishtim disaster at the Mayak facility in Chelyabinsk Oblast Soviet Union released 20 million curies of radioactivity in 1957. This event contaminated 20,000 square kilometers the size of West Virginia with cesium-137 and strontium-90, which have half-lives of about 30 years. The area remains hazardous with groundwater pollution extending to the Arctic Ocean. Germany's AS2 mine houses 125,787 drums of low-level waste and 1,293 containers of medium-level waste. The site, active from 1967 to 1978, contains materials from nuclear plants and research centers. Water ingress threatens to spread contamination. Inadequate records obscure the full extent of stored isotopes and their half-lives. Hanford in Washington State, USA holds 56 million gallons of waste from plutonium production. Leaks have occurred in underground tanks. Workers report health issues from toxic vapors. Contamination risks to the Columbia River persist. The site contains long-lived isotopes like plutonium-239 with a half-life of 24,100 years. France's La Hague reprocessing plant has operated since 1976. It extracts plutonium from MOX fuel and releases radioactive materials into the English Channel. Greenpeace claims ocean dumping occurs daily. Isotopes released include iodine-129, which has a half-life of 15.7 million years. The Farallon Islands dump off San Francisco contains 47,800 waste containers across 1,400 square kilometers of seafloor. Dumped between 1946 and 1970, many drums have deteriorated. The site, now within a marine sanctuary, raises concerns about ecosystem impacts. Isotopes present include plutonium-239 and americium-241. New York's Atlantic Coast dump site, 120 miles offshore, received thousands of waste drums from 1946 to 1962. The exact number and condition of containers remain unknown. Leakage threatens marine life and coastal communities, and long-lived isotopes like plutonium may persist for millennia. Russia's Kara Sea dump contains 17 nuclear reactors and 19,000 waste containers. Soviet-era disposal practices left a legacy of Arctic Ocean pollution. Melting sea ice may expose more waste. Isotopes like cesium-137 and strontium-90 contaminate the marine environment. The Westlake landfill in St. Louis, Missouri contains uranium processing waste from the 1970s. An underground fire threatens to spread contamination. Radium-226 with a 1,600-year half-life poses long-term risks. Groundwater contamination remains a concern for nearby communities. Sellafield in Cumbria, England discharges waste into the Irish Sea. The site reprocesses and decommissions nuclear fuel. Marine life shows elevated radioactivity levels. Technetium-99 with a half-life of 211,000 years has been detected in seaweed and shellfish. India's Jadugoda uranium mine in Jharkhand produces tailings containing radioactive waste. Dams holding this material risk failure. Local populations report increased cancer rates and congenital disabilities. Radon gas, a decay product of uranium, contaminates the air and soil. These sites represent a fraction of global nuclear waste dumps. These areas will be contaminated for generations. The full extent of environmental and health impacts remains unknown. Humanity's atomic ambitions have created an enduring toxic inheritance. Fishermen continue to fish and consume radioactive fish. Unexplained fish, animals, and bird die-offs continue all over the world. The media shows us skinny, starving polar bears. Are these skinny polar bears dying, or are they emaciated with leukemia? This and more can be found in the book on Amazon called Nuclear Extension Event is Killing Our Families by Marco Vovk.
Below in the comments section is a link to this book and other books by Marco Vogt. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell for Marco's newest videos.